Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time you're tuning in. Today, I am lucky enough again to be joined by Jane Morgan. How are you today, Jane? Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. And what's the weather like over at uh, Roselle well, today? I tell by my scarf, very cold. <laughs> Yeah, I've got lovely blue sky today, so I'm very thankful for that. And we can be outside and um, enjoy a little bit of vitamin D for the day. It does look very beautiful where you are in the Hawkesbury. <laughs> Hello to everybody that is online, everybody from uh, End of Month Angels and also Rachel Goldsworthy Realty together with all the clan um, that we had last time and new people that are joining us for the first time. Today what we thought we would talk about, last week was, uh, or the week before was very successful and we had a lot of good feedback from people and uh, I think we wanted to cover off on all things good tenants, didn't we Jane? Yeah, it just seems like a hot topic at the moment and I heard on the radio this morning that um, I think it was 80% of senior siders are renting at the moment, so it's probably a good time to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, a big stat, but it's so true. And I think a lot of people, including agents, um, over the years have taken for granted their rent roll, perhaps, and maybe even their tenants, to the yeah. point that they're the ones that are paying the rent. So What's they're not? the ones that um, are allowing our landlords to own the rental properties if they do have a mortgage, um, okay. or alternatively, just sort of supporting that self-funded um, lifestyle that the landlord does have. So yeah. yeah, good good topic to cover off on. A couple of things that we're going to talk about today in regards to payments yes. and inspections and routine inspections together with any other types of inspections. So maybe we should start off, Jane, on um, payments. What's the best way with a great tenant that you know who that tenant is and the best way to identify the payments coming into the trust account? Yeah, so obviously from our perspective, being the trust accountants, we're seeing the payments come through the rental trust. And what we would really ideally like to see um, and what every agent should implement is a tenant reference code system. So not everyone's lucky enough to use um, Macquarie Banking. Um, I still think that that's probably the best reference system. But uh, by the way, Macquarie don't pay me to say that. But um, <laughs> Just clarify but, that. Yeah, just to clarify that. But uh, basically any reference code system where the numbering system is unique. And so that way when the rental payments come through, it can only allocate to one person and there's no error um, for getting it wrong or allocating it to the wrong tenant. Yeah, absolutely. We've got the same system um, that we utilise and I think it's much easier um, for not only the tenants to identify what they when they go in and walk into a bank or do a direct debit, they've got a particular identifier that they can use, but also on the back end of that with the trust accounting with what you're doing and what we're doing, um, it's just easy to identify for the person processing those. It is because obviously a lot of people have the same last name and from a trust accounting perspective, it's very, very easy to make a mistake and allocate that to the wrong person. Um, and, you know, if there's a numbering system, it just makes it more streamlined for the agency as well um, as making it easy for the tenant because they obviously want their payments allocated to the right spot as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, because there'd be nothing worse than having unidentified funds in a trust and Definitely. having a big rent roll and not being able to work out that. And then until that tenant calls in and said, hey, my, I've got this SMS this week to say my, my rent in is, is in arrears, when in That's actual right. fact it's not only because it hasn't had an identified fund go through into their um, tenant ledger. Yes, unidentified deposits are definitely the bugbear of all trust accountants. They will vouch um, for that. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yes, a, a referencing number system is definitely the way to go. Yeah. And also it's um, with tenants. I know, for example, this week um, and last week we had a couple of tenants that might think that it's been better by paying up or rounding up. If a yes. bill is, you know, $3.22, they might pay $3.25 or $4. And whilst yeah. that's great in in theory, it doesn't help with the accounting because one doesn't sort of cancel off against the other and you've got to put that additional amount somewhere. And yeah. then it's a process of asking, you know, did you want to put that to water? Did you want to put that to rent? It's not yeah. just a, a, an easy fix there. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, no, it is important to pay the right amount that 
the tenant has been invoiced um, because it goes onto their rental ledger too and obviously maintains a good history for their next agent. Um, but also to it, it uh, satisfies the trust account that everything is perfect within the trust account and that we don't have to do a refund for three cents. Um, <laughs> no, at the end no. Of the day, it is a trust, and if the tenant overpays by three cents, we have to refund three cents. Yeah, I, yeah. I've I've written checks before the times of transfers for three yeah. cents or you know whatever it might be, and it as you say, it seems um, you know unnecessary, but it is a trust, and all funds right. need to be allocated. So uh, yeah. Another good thing with tenants, I mean, I've got some great tenants that um, I've worked with over the years and we've really got some good tenants now with our current rent roll. And we get messages all the time, you know, they might send through a receipt each week for what they're doing, you know, oh, hi, I just wanted to let you know, I've paid the money, this is the receipt. And it's really nice because you've got that um, continuity, you know that they've paid their funds and, and you get to say hello and hear what's happening in their life as well. So it's not just about, you know, taking funds and, you know, transferring them into an account and paying a landlord. It's about relationships that we build over the years, isn't it? That's right. That is right. And um, I know too with a lot of the cloud software that's out now, um, you know, the, the receipt gets emailed to the tenant so that the tenant can actually see that you are receiving their rent um, and they're getting an acknowledgement for that as well. So that's um, one of the things or one of the feedback that we've had from a lot of agents that have, migrated to cloud, such as yourself recently. Um, and a lot of the tenants are enjoying that because they can see that the agent is, um, you know, doing the right thing. Yeah, I've really enjoyed the new system because of that, that transparency for the tenant as well as the landlord, because when the tenant receives their email to say, you know, and the receipt, you've paid this much and this day and this is where you're up to, the landlord also receives the ingoings and the outgoings and what's happening on with their account. So it's it's live. It's a live yeah. feed for them. And um, I think that they do appreciate that. Oh, you've got rid of your third eye. You had a little third I know, eye. I'm just so there's a lot going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. You're just extra, extra um, energy coming through. That's, right. that's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> the other thing that um, makes a good tenant is with the the inspections, the routine inspections that can be done on a regular basis. Um, you can have any anywhere up to four, four in any particular year. I know yeah. that, um, you know, that's what we do as a practice. I know some agencies may not necessarily do that all of the time. What's your yeah. thoughts in regards to inspections, Jane? Well, when I was a property manager, once upon a time, um, we used to do one after the first um, probably 12 weeks of the tenancy just to make sure that everything was um, acceptable and, um, you know, that they weren't putting any holes in the walls. <laughs> and, uh, and then generally after that, it was twice a year. We yeah. never really had to do it more than that. Um, we were lucky enough to be in a good area where the tenants did really look after their homes and, and kept everything really clean and tidy and presentable. Yeah, I think it's important um, to do those inspections and especially, as you say, when you're taking over from another agency. Uh, we have one the other day that we did set up an inspection because the documents that we received um, you know, may not, not have had everything that needed to be in there. So say, for example, you, you may, the agents may have heard, you know, oh, the house was like that when we moved in. Well, if yeah. you don't have a routine inspection or if you don't have an ingoing inspection report, it's very difficult to go back on the information that you have and yeah. say, okay, well, these were the photos taken. This is what it looked like. Is that what you're saying at this point? Because mm. um, there needs to be that transparency, I think. Definitely. And one of the things I see a lot of, especially with um, my business broking side of the business is, uh, and obviously helping um, agents transition from one to the other, is that a lot of the um, agents or even just losing a management and picking up off another agency, we're seeing that a lot of the times that there was no in going. And it's like, yeah. well, what has the agent got to go off? It's just absolutely yeah. nothing. We took over one recently that there wasn't, um, there was an ingoing, but yeah. there wasn't any photographs. So yeah. it was just a matter of paperwork. And if everybody knows the um, the form that is from either Real Estate Institute or a form that they've 
you know, made themselves. It's usually yeah. a 12 page thereabouts document that documents both from the front to the outside, you know, internals, and it's quite detailed. But you can't just rely on what's written in those. So say, for example, you have the entrance and it'll have the light fittings, the flooring, what the wall color is, all of those sorts of things. But nothing really replaces a visual on the area because you can see whether it's behind that front door, whether the doorstop is in place or not in place. If, say, for example, an agent had missed writing that down on the ingoing report, because if you have a doorstop that's not there and they say it was there before, the owner says it was there because it's very difficult. So once you've got the photo, it's like, oh, yeah, there's the doorstop. And yeah. that's why, um, you know, it prevented the, the hole from going in behind the, the door or there might have been a hole in the door. And and the doorstop was removed after it, after the yeah. ingoing. So really valuable information that seems very, you know, why would you want to know whether there's a doorstop there? But it's um, it's no, really it's important. important. Yeah. yeah. And as, um, in your real estate agency, do you have a process for following up the tenant to make sure that they do return it within the, the um, prescribed time frame? Yeah, we send out a letter just as a reminder because sometimes, I mean, life gets busy and I understand that more than anybody, but equally, if you don't get that document back within the prescribed time frame, then whatever the agent has put in that ingoing report, the photos that have been taken, it's a document that you've signed and that will be what stands. And if it were, ever went to tribunal, that's what you have to base the information off. Whereas, um, you know, if you give the tenant an opportunity, you haven't returned your form, you may have forgotten, you may have been a little bit busy, but it's really important that you get that back to us. Most yeah. of them will send it back to us. A certain percent won't and they're happy with the information that's in there, but th there's always yeah. one little thing here, there, or, or that might be, say, for example, um, something that might be where we consider wear and tear, but they just yep. want to make sure it's on the report, which is important to have everything listed out there, I think. And it just yeah. saves the arguments as well at the end of the tenancy because no one wants wants to have arguments. No, and I think too the other important thing is is when they are returned to the office that they're date stamped um, and signed much. off because, you know, somebody can say, oh, well, I sent that back and you've got a form in the file, but it's not date stamped. So it's really important if you don't um, have that on there. It's all about documentation. It's all about um, process and, and checklists, I suppose. And as much as I never used to be one of those types of people, but <laughs> now I've become that as, a, as an agent over yeah. the years, because if you get attached to the process, everything else becomes easy. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, and, and so what? anything else that makes a good tenant that you feel, Jane? Um, well, if the agency doesn't happen to have reference codes um, and they are issuing the tenant with the property address as the reference code, I guess the danger of that, and why we don't recommend it, is because, you know, obviously there's changeover of tenancy and properties change hands. And if the outgoing tenant uses the same reference as the ingoing tenant, there's a chance there that you can make a mistake with the receding and obviously apply funds to the wrong wrong person again. So again, that's why it's ref, um, important to have those unique reference codes because it just eliminates that from, from happening. Yeah, no, completely. And does anybody on uh, watching at the moment have any questions? Are <laughs> oh, you got lights it's still streaming in? It'd be nice to be in an office that's got the sunshine there. Yeah, we've got a nice the, view out to my left, but you can't actually see it. <laughs> no, no, taken over by by the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. no, that's all good. Um, is anybody watching have any questions in regards to it? We've had a few questions during the week, which is as a result of what we've put forward today. Um, yeah. But anybody on the line that we're happy to answer your question, um, you know, live stream. Yeah. Looks like everybody seems to be happy. We've got a couple of thumbs up from um, lots of different people, which is really nice. Nice to have everybody with us. Um, the other thing that I find is really nice with the, the tenancy and so forth is that when you're seeing people on a quarterly basis or a six monthly basis, it's not just a matter of, okay, well, they've signed up the lease and we, we won't ever see you again. Um, yeah. We had one the other day that came in and they said, um, they came over to our agency from another agency and they said oh we did um, we moved into the house it was about 15 months ago and we've just given notice and we've just received a um a letter from the agent to say that we're going to do a, a routine inspection yeah and i thought 15 months <laughs> after they've moved in no 
uh, no ingoing inspection, no 12 weekly check in with you, no quarterly, no six monthly, nothing. So I think um, as much as there's large rent rolls out there and people do get busy, it's really important whether it's a three month or six month um, touch point to check in with the the tenant and just see where they're at. Make sure that, you know, it's not just about the landlord checking, the agent checking on behalf of the landlord. It's about going and checking the property for the tenant as well, because you want to make sure that, that everything's right for them, don't you? Absolutely. And I think um, to, you know, um, it's not because we're wanting to, um, you know, see that you've made the bed or, you know, see that you've cleaned all the dishes in the sink. It's about checking the condition of the property. And often, yeah when you hear about these cases where agents have been taken to tribunal or landlords have been yeah. taken to tribunal, it's often because they weren't inspecting the property frequently enough. So I guess from a landlord perspective, it's probably, um, you know, a good idea to double check to see how often your agent does inspect the property. Um, oh, for sure. You know, and, and sometimes that's, um, you know, whatever happens that the agent... Um, doesn't uh, doesn't follow that process it tends to backfire um more so on the landlord side than than the agent side yeah oh absolutely i completely agree with that and as you say we're not there to we're not interested in personal items we're just no. there to do a routine inspection we generally take that photo from the front the backyard and we certainly ask that question of the tenants as to whether they want us to be taking photos inside or not and if yeah. they don't, we're absolutely fine with that. We have no problems, but it's more just for those owners that are either interstate, overseas, or that just simply can't make the inspection, um, that they just want to see that, A, you've been to the property as an agent um, to have a look at it, and B, that everything's in order. So, um, you know, and little things, I mean, I, I've renovated properties over the years and I see things differently at a property than I, you know, that some agents may do because, you're looking from a renovator's point of view, you're looking for what are the things that are going to be needing to be fixed in the short term, medium term and long term. So yeah. this actually protects your investment long term. And I think that it adds value to the property as well. And, and it adds value to the tenant that's there that's paying the rent, because if there's little things that are being done and the property's being well maintained, they're more likely to a stay there longer, which means lower vacancy for you, or yeah. b you know, just want to stay there um, for a longer period of time and pay the pay the the um, the rent on a regular basis and look after the property as though it was their own because the yeah. owner's looking after it. That's right. Yeah, it's a win win. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, was there any other questions from anybody on the line that we have in regards to tenancies? I mean, this could be such a, a deeper layer, couldn't it, Jane? I mean, we could talk for days about what um, what to do and what, what not to do when it comes to, to tenants. But the main thing is that an agent's respectful, I think, too, of a tenant because they are paying the rent that's paying the landlord's mortgage or in their funds. And, um, you know, they've been good to, to me over the years and I've had some really great interactions with tenants and we've got some really good tenants, so I do appreciate them. So thank you to all my tenants out there and thank you to all my potential tenants out there and people that will be coming aboard. And if anybody's got any questions in regards to tenancy or um, leasing a property or those sorts of things, I'm more than happy to help. Um, rachelgoldsworthy.com.au. And Jane, End of Month Angels, where can we pe people find you? Just our website, endofmonthangels.com.au. Yeah, and Tomorrow that's just in regards to all things trust accounting, all things um, training, all things consulting, bookkeeping, anything that people want to know about um, property and rent, rent rolls, we, we can help you as well. Yeah, and one of the things that we can sort of, I guess, help agents with is is establishing a um, payment system for their tenants to use, um, sort of streamlines their receiving processes a little bit more and um, make sure that, you know, they're keeping their landlords and their tenants happy by making sure that the rent gets allocated to the right spot. Is you finding that there's any preferred payment options out there at the moment? Um, look, most, um, you know, not every agency can afford um, the luxury of, you know, some yeah. of the reference um, systems that are out there. But, um, look, I think, um, you know, working with what you've got and, you know, it doesn't need to be on a huge scale. It certainly doesn't need to be expensive. If you've got a cloud-based trust accounting software, you can actually use the um, ID that the software actually allocates to the tenant. 
um, which is one really cool cool way of implementing a reference system. Um, and then that way you have obviously never double up on the numbers. You're just allocating the next number in the series to the yeah. tenant. That's the code that can go on the front page of the lease. Um, and then that way that is unique throughout their whole tenancy and it stays with them. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that's great. Well, it's good um, to cover off on this topic. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, Jane, you're going away for a little while. I don't know whether yeah. we can say where you're going, but um, you're going to have a nice time, a well-deserved break. Yes, yes. And you're going away as well, possibly. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm yet to book, but I, I'm thinking of heading to the States on Monday. I've got a conference that um, is all about, um, what else would it be about, Jane? Property. Real estate, of course. <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> I love learning ideas from different places. My grandfather, when he was alive, he always used to talk about overseas and the ideas that they had over there and he travelled to the States and learnt a lot and he had a, a large business um, in Hurstville and, yeah. you know, he used to sort of glean the ideas from the, the people in the States and I think it doesn't matter who you're with, whether it's whether you're with colleagues like ourselves that are sharing ideas or whether it's with, you know, the, the States or another country that you can get some ideas from, just one good idea helps everybody's lives a little bit and um, can make the process a little bit simpler with real estate too. Definitely. I think any knowledge that you can get from, from any source is, is definitely beneficial. And if you can learn something over there to implement in your business um, to streamline things, that's great. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, if anybody's got any questions in regards to property, real estate, trust accounting, um, tenancy, being a landlord we're happy to help i'll put some links on this down below but thank you for everybody being on the line thank you jane for your time and we will catch up with you in a couple of weeks when you're rested and ready for the day after your breakaway yes all we'll right see, we'll see you next time okay thanks jane we'll catch up with you then see you bye. everybody bye, bye.